Today's life advice was presented by Modelo. Modelo, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. Uh, what's up, everybody? Life advice, rr at gmail.com. And Kyle is back east. Get ready. The countdown is on. It's very strange. I still don't quite understand how the YouTube part of the show works, which is probably uh, my fault. But we're looking at Kyle right now, and he has a boyish glow to him <laughs> that I thought was a filter. So Rudy and I are in agreement on this one. Like He's got a weird look right now. He looks younger. He looks like a boy. He's back home. I don't know what it is, but uh, it's working for you, buddy. It's the jewel of the Hudson Valley. It's just what it does to you. Something about a kid in his hometown, you know? You got that like sepia tone. I don't know. It's just like it's a good look for you. You do. Thanks. Look, you look good, man. And I'm, I'm happy to say that. I knew the week of your wedding, you should look good. Thanks. Thanks. I'm, uh, I've am i held off on the haircut. I'm going to get my um, haircut on Wednesday, which would be tomorrow by uh, my like my childhood barber. First time in like 12 years, I think that it ha that's happened. So uh, I guess I hope he doesn't fuck this up. I mean, <laughs> Fingers crossed. I, didn't, I, didn't yeah. think, I didn't I was like, oh, it'd be so great <laughs> that the guy I used to get my haircut from is now like, you know, blown up pretty big and and stuff like that. And and now it's just like I realize he hasn't touched my hair in like a decade. So <laughs> I guess the first time will be two days before the wedding. What's going on with that mustache, you think? I just want to, what am I going to do with it? I think I'll leave it up to him and be like, what do you think we should do? Um, I was just, I wanted to give him the most canvas to work with here. So I just been kind of not touching anything. You planning to go like, yeah. shave in the face though? Are you like, I don't think so. I don't really like when I do that. So I don't think I'll do that. Um, yeah, I would say don't do anything drastic because obviously the picture thing is pretty, it's pretty forever. Yeah, it looks uh, forever, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the mustache is definitely looking weird, though, right now, I would say, no matter what is going on. Huh. Like, through this filter, again, you look you look like you're 22 right now. You look really happy. You're home. But there's a mustache angle that I'm I'm picking up that I don't know if that's anyone's goal. You think goal, it's not big it, enough? It's definitely not too big. No, it's not big enough. It's just spotty. It's spotty, and it seems to be focused in the nostril area and then <laughs> kind of fades. Huh fades to the wings to the left and right well, all but good that notes, could just be i'll the, bring it up to yeah. my barber all good notes yeah. I'll, I'll be like hey you know the, can we do something about the spottiness of this um thanks yeah if, yeah any other time it i could, would say fuck off but i think this is good <laughs> this is good stuff thank you if you said it now i would accept it as well i just <laughs> i'm trying to have your back and I, I again this filter is really throwing me off it's like somebody sent us kyle's younger brother to produce the show for the it's day. It's just an orange uh, room and there's like an orange old like old school light here. So I don't know. I maybe I, I could turn the lights off maybe. I don't know. No, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine All right. with it. Okay. You're gonna be able to carry on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh let's get to a few of these. Uh we have a business proposal. Get hit by a football player gym business. What's up guys? Thanks for reading this email. I'm sitting here watching the NHL playoffs and I see the Kachuk Eichel hit and I think to myself, what would that feel like? My next thought is, do I even have a way to ever feel that hit? I don't play in the NHL or NFL. I could have probably guessed that. Uh, so I've never felt a hit like that. Then I started thinking, could I go to a gym or studio and safely get hit like an NFL or NHL player? Uh, like maybe the ice and boards are padded in the NHL style and maybe the grass is padded in the NFL style. You get to wear some extra pads. I start looking around on the Google and I can't find any place to do this at. Here's my business site. What time did he send this email? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's before midnight, East Coast. Very early West Coast. So what day was it though? Was it a Friday, Saturday night? Oh, it was last night because oh, okay. the hit, the hit oh, was right, last night. Right, yeah. Um. Here's the business idea. Open up gyms like these where people can have a simulated hit by an NFL or NHL player. Controlled environment, likely machines and not humans hitting the patrons. Since it would be automated, I could offer customers to be hit at 50 or 25% instead of 100 because I highly doubt there's a large market of people wanting to be depleted by Troy Palomalu. I would have to find uh, a way to purchase the rights to a Palomalu or Ronnie Lott hit number from Amazon Stats. Eh, I don't know. I don't know if you would have to do that. I remember the old pitching, uh, pitching machines in Miskwamakit where they were named after different Red Sox relievers. I doubt back then anybody was suing anybody. Um, <laughs> but, uh, whatever. All right. Um, customers Rock, could choose. Rock back. No, dude, way before that. Yeah. Like way, way, like Eckersley. Um, 
you know, and I'm talking like before Oakland, Eckersley. So, um, I, I, look, I mean, he's asking a bunch of other questions about insurance and the legality of it all. Uh, he thinks that there's waivers that you could sign. I still think you're just getting sued, man. You're just inventing a business to be sued. And I don't think that there's a huge demand. I think there's a huge demand. Like the only place this would work is in a place where guys were younger and drunk all the time. Back so maybe Vegas, service, maybe yeah, yeah, m- maybe Vegas, where guys are like, dude, I could, I could take that hit, and you can't. Your body wouldn't be conditioned to it. Most of us would, would be so fucked up from it. Um, if you're younger, you know, you might just recover. If you're older, dude. I mean, guys reach for stuff and they're out of commission for three days, just reaching. (laughs) Okay. So, uh, I don't think it's a very good business plan. I think most people don't want to do it. I think there's a lot of people who would say they'd like to do it, definitely, which is still not, not a big enough number to market and then actually showing up to the place to then get smashed. So I don't even think you thought this was a good idea. So I don't know if he's really even asking us anything. I always, I mean, I always, I don't know how how it would it would work like i mean you see kimbo slices did this 10 years ago right i mean this was uh, this was like his whole business model right give him out you stand there (laughs) i'll give you a 100 bucks and i'll just murder you and that's kind of i don't know if he ever got sued or not but like if i mean it's from what i heard there's no like when you're when you're you know football coach tells you like you got to be running as hard as you can otherwise you're going to get hurt like if you're just standing there waiting to take a hit is where you get more hurt than if you're like running, you know, is this like a ball drill where you're running and trying to run through a hit or try to brace for a hit, or you're just standing there waiting for somebody to come at you. Right. I mean, so if you're just, I think it's already off to a bad start. If the guy's just going to be standing there waiting for some machine to, <laughs> to come at a certain speed and crash into him. So um, I, I think you haven't thought it out, but yeah, the, the only, the only people that are going to do this is you who has this weird, you know, thought about whether I could take a hit or not and you probably wouldn't even go through with it or it would just be have to be like a a bachelor party service where it's just like you're throwing like a <laughs> you're throwing a, a like a kids party for an adult and like you know you, you just pay for a service and they come and set up in your backyard or something I don't think it's going to be a I don't think your parking lot's going to be full every day if you, if you you know you're a satellite <laughs> office on the back of a gym so uh, it's probably just a no-go and maybe just open a food truck instead if you need to do something <laughs> I don't know <laughs> have a different business in mind I feel like I'm not as concerned with the legalities. I mean, you sign waivers for like any, like, I mean, I just went, I was at a bachelor party last weekend and we went like whitewater rafting in Maine, like 45 degree weather. And it was pretty miserable. And we signed a waiver and they're like, yeah, you could die. Like, you know, it is what it is. They give, they give you the whole spiel and you get caught under the water and you know, it's a, it's a recovery, not a rescue situation. I don't, I think, I think I'm not worried about the legality of it, but I just think who are the repeat customers? Like it happens one time. Like say you go once, are you going back? Like, is that, it feels like one of those things like, all right, yeah, I felt it. And then that's it. Like, are people going to be driving in from other states to get hit by a professional football player? Probably not. End of the the football, end of the fantasy football season. Maybe that's like a punishment for a few guys. I don't, I don't know. It's going to be, I think it's going to be spotty at best. Yeah. I, I, so I, you know, Maybe it's part of a bigger business, you know, maybe it's like a carnival <laughs> thing. Like it's, 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 you, you pitch this to a carnival and you go on the road, but I, I can't imagine that it's its own thing. Yeah. I mean, when's the next time you're going rafting? Uh, you, we probably could go like every five years. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause even rafting, like you go, maybe next time it won't be hypothermia inducing. How bad of a time was that? That sounds terrible. It was. So, so it was the first time we went, it was like 85, sunny, beautiful middle of July. It was awesome. Um, this time we drove up on a Thursday. It was 95 degrees out. And then two days later on Saturday when we were going, it was 45 degrees. Uh, shout out to Maine. And dudes were hungover. It was early in the morning. Everybody was looking for a way out. It was freezing cold. We put full wetsuits on, you know, even down to the shoes. And it actually wasn't as bad as you would think. You would think. I mean, it was definitely cold. Well, only one of my buddies actually fell into the water itself. And he was like, it actually wasn't that bad because the wind, there was no wind underwater. So it actually for, for like 30 seconds felt kind of good. Um, but it was pretty cold. I like, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Wouldn't recommend. There you go. Okay. Uh, we got uh, two females slash women nice. checking in. Uh, here we go. 23 year old female, five, six, one I'm not sure my gym stats, but I got into running a few months ago. Just hit a six and a half minute mile. If that counts for anything, not bad. that's pretty good. Yeah. Currently in grad school in a small town and have made friends with a group of girls that would not normally hang out with outside of school. It's kind of 
making the best out of a bad situation. Well, who's the coolest <laughs> chicken town? <laughs> not really on your level. <laughs> yeah, right. These girls are not cool. You're basically doing am. them a favor. <laughs> right. Normally wouldn't even give them the time of the day. All right. Uh, as there are not many people in my class and I'm six hours away from my hometown and close friends, the rest of the girls definitely consider me one of their closer friends. However, I cannot say the same at all. Again, what gave it away? I tolerate <laughs> them because it is my benefit for studying homework, et cetera. One girl, let's call her Amanda, has already asked me and the rest of the group to be bridesmaids in her December uh, 2023 wedding, which I reluctantly agreed to. We all went on her bachelorette trip in may this year with all the wedding planning going on for amanda's wedding another girl let's call her rachel told us she wants her to, uh, wants us to be in her wedding in november 24 uh have all of us to be bridesmaids again Losers. rachel rachel <laughs> isn't even engaged yet well maybe it's a little she's a carpool planner. for the horse right i mean yeah I right know. right here's my dilemma i graduate in august 24 my plan was to basically disappear from the group and move on with my life <laughs> Being in a wedding is expensive, let alone having to pay for student loans. I'd prefer not to spend time and money to be in a wedding of a person I don't consider a close friend. I know Rachel will definitely ask us to be in her wedding when the time comes, but I do not want to stay friends with this group longer than I have to. When Rachel does end up asking me to be a bridesmaid, how can I kindly let her down and tell her no after already agreeing to be in Amanda's wedding? Also open to any ideas of getting out of this impending situation. Thanks, my boyfriend and I love the pod. Uh, I I think you're built for this. I don't think you give a shit. Um, so to ask us the soft way of doing it, I don't think you care about the soft way. You're openly admitting that you were only friends with these people because you had no other options, and you've already presented the case that like you know that you're just kind of killing time, and they think you're a lot cooler. So you have all the juice. It sounds like too in this dynamic. So if you're already kind of wired this way. I don't think you need our help, really. Like, hey, I don't want to go. <laughs> you you don't want to be friends with these people at all. You're basically, once you graduated, you've told us you're done with them. So um, I'm surprised you feel like you have to be held to any kind of standard at all. Like, you, I, don't, I don't think you give a shit. So why do you need our advice? You're just going to tell, I don't know, maybe you go to the first one and tell the next one, yeah, I'll be gone. I'll be moving and I won't be able to do that. I mean, honestly, if you give such an abrupt and a matter of fact answer that somebody's going to be so thrown off by your directness, <laughs> they're not even going to know what to do with you. And, and you're not going to win other people that transaction. Asking. Yeah, right. That means you just straight up say it. Like, yeah, I, after this, I'm not going to any of them. See ya. <laughs> and, you know, they're going to say what an asshole she day. was. And, yeah, and you're not going to care because <laughs> you don't care about this friend group. So, I. I think that's a route. I also think this could call for a big lie, big lie, Find a big lie, big lie, huge lie. Um, and I think you could pull it off because you're going to be disappeared. And, um, you know, if you get caught, it really doesn't matter because you're not planning on doubling back to this group. So I think you just find out when it is month long trip to Europe. That's what you say. That's what you say. You just you find out like uh, nah, kind of what got it Instagram, is. Instagram, though, they're going to know what you get. Start but posting you'll, fake you'll be pictures. disappeared. You'll be disappeared. And maybe you don't even post the your thing. You know, I don't know. Uh, I just think this calls for a big lie. I think you could just be like, when is it? Oh, the whole month of August, I'm gone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm Bummer. sorry. I'm so, yeah, sorry. You know, but, uh, you know, the graduation party will be fun. You know, that'll be great. <laughs> so I think uh, I think a big lie works, especially but, if you don't really care that much. But we're talking bachelorette party and to be in the wedding. That's, too, you know, that those aren't always a month apart. Like they could be more than a month apart. So you're, you'd have to, what's your excuse for the other one? If it's like, oh, a well, the, well, the apart. bachelorette party is just, there's something that comes up or something. You could even wait till like get a week up and be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And then the funds uh, right now. Yeah. Or just something comes up. Like, I don't know. Um, something you pick what comes up, but then you got your, but then you got your big trip. That's just, everything's blocked out. Have you, have you guys ever said no to being in a wedding? No, I've only been invited to Kyle. Two. Not a good question for Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> in a wedding? In it? Yeah. That was I don't. I uh, maybe. I don't. But then, I, then I didn't go. I mean, I've I've fucked up a few weddings where I've been like, oh yeah, I guess I'm not going to that. You know, when I was younger, work stuff. You know. Like, I think I've told the story a couple of times, but like one of my friends was getting married. I didn't RSVP because I was in my twenties, just assuming well, I'll just show up. <laughs> well, they invited and, me. They know I'm going, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. 
Right, right. I'm like, whatever, just let me know what time you guys are getting there. <laughs> and then um, it was Sox, Yankees. It was the NFL draft and the Celtics are playing the Pacers. And so I called my buddy Hal and I was like, hey, I got a luxury suite uh, Pacer Celtics Friday night. You want to go? He's like, dickhead, I'm getting married Saturday. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. He's like, you're coming, right? And I was like, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I, I was like, I don't think I am now that I thought about it. He's like, sweet. He's like, what the fuck, dude? And I go, yeah, but I, I actually have to work from Foxborough. It was the Vince Wilfrick draft, I believe. So I was actually live from Foxborough, which I think is the only time I ever did anything like that. So work asked me to do like this extra day. So, you know, and I was just getting started in Boston. Um, so maybe, you know, I've been there a year or two, not even. I, and I was just like, dude, this is an awful weekend. He's like, yeah, well, I picked this weekend a while ago. And it's, and so I just was like, oh, I you still yeah, talk to that guy. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm actually still very close with him. But oh, right, I mean, good. luckily, he was kind of wired that way to just go, you know, you're an idiot. And I was like, yep. Uh, and then I think the other thing, too, is that he was even kind of like, why don't you just come down for the reception? Like, just drive down. And, and at that point, I was like, yeah, I, I, you know, I, school's I, already probably, out, dude. I'm not doing Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not sure I could even really like swing. I'm not even sure I could have afforded like a, a hotel room, like just outside of the budget uh, at that time. I mean, I wouldn't have been afraid of just saying I'll worry about it later and then having to deal with it later. But yeah, I've definitely screwed up some stuff like that. But this is like premeditated, you know. But as you've said in the email, your timeline is pretty specific. You graduate next year, August 24. You've got one girl here planning you to be a bridesmaid for a wedding that she's not even, you know, she's planning a wedding and she's not even engaged yet, which, you know, maybe she's just... Maybe these are Midwestern people and they've got it all mapped out. Maybe it's the South and, and people can't believe you're not married yet and you're 25. So, you know, different sensibilities all over the country here. But I, I think you're out is, uh, hey, once I'm gone, I'm gone. <laughs> this thing here, it's over. Yeah. 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 Just, we had a good run. Just start hugging everybody and don't reach out again. You've You've been notified. Right, I, I don't I, think I don't I, think she I think that's needs a better option. Than, I think that's a better option than Kyle's option. I don't think than I don't the big like the lie. lie. If you don't want to feel that that way when you're telling them that, I think there's nothing wrong with a big lie. That's all. They've got a lot of other shit going on, you know. Because you don't I the email was, I don't know. I read the email. I mean, I I don't even mean this. Like, you seem rather matter of fact. Dare I say, leaning towards cold. You don't give a fuck about this friend group. Like, it's a great amount of power that you have when you don't care how they feel. So, so just, you know, keep it moving. Yeah, it's got that Larry David vibe when Marty Funkhauser was like, if you weren't my best friend, I would tear your head off. And Larry's like, I'm not your best friend. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just Larry David. It Just be a little unpleasant, I guess. Be honest and a little unpleasant. That's fine. I'd lie. All right. Uh, let's, let's go with another female. She says, I mean, woman. Uh, all right. 33, five, eight, just ran a marathon in four twenty six. I live in Santa Monica. I just started dating a guy about a month ago. Nothing serious. Uh, still feeling each other out, but we have a lot of fun together and I'm starting to like him for a bit of context. He works in lending at a bank. Did not expect that would mean he was rich, but generally a decent paying job out in LA. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, it's not his bank. He's not the one lending the money. Uh, <laughs> sure. He says so, it that way sometimes though. <laughs> right. That's, <laughs> big party for my bank this week you know christmas i'm a bank teller ryan says to always tell everyone you work in banking um all right so one major issue he's outwardly frugal he's the type of person who would want to itemize a 10 plus person group dinner and count how many appetizers everyone ate even if everyone was drinking some examples on our first day, he made it a point to make sure we made it in time for happy hour, made it by a couple minutes, and proceeded to get multiple beers before it ended. Anything to save $2 a beer. <laughs> That's understandable. I don't hate that. Yeah. That's understandable. He made it a point to get sure we made it in time for happy hour, made it by a couple minutes, then proceeded to get multiple beers before it ended. What's multiple beers? Did you like sit around with six cores lights and they were getting warm? <laughs> no, I think two, the extra beer or two if you're really planning on hammering that first one. Yeah, sometimes guys hammer that first one. Um, Stanford. Last, last Sunday, last Sunday we went 
to a couple bars on the west side, had a few beers, split a pizza, which he paid for. I slept over at his place. Ew. And the next morning when we walked to get coffee, he asked if I could pay since he had gone over his budget the night before. Dude. Don't love that. Yeah. Don't love that. He sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I love like what happens if you go over your budget and no one else is around? Then what happens to your budget? <laughs> right? Like, ah, oh, man, did you even sleep over for the good stuff or did you sleep over? Because it's like at least here I have a budget buffer in the morning where if <laughs> I have to get coffee or juice, I have someone else I could try to offset, whatever. Um, number three, we made a bet on the Nuggets Heat series. Being a bitter Celtics fan, uh, I said the Heat wouldn't win more than one game. <laughs> hey, welcome to the club. His suggestion was for the loser to pay for dinner at a $2 sign restaurant. Yes, he said $2 <laughs> sign. So that means what? That's like medium you know, expensive. You, medium yeah. expensive. What are we talking? PF Chang's? Like one dollar one dollar sign is, you know, McDonald's and like, you know, some, you know, maybe there's some some diners that are like one dollar sign and then, you know, the three dollar signs is 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 pretty nice and four dollar signs is like, you know, like major domo's probably three dollar signs. And then uh four dollar signs is some shit you probably would have a hard time getting into. Two dollar signs. No, there's no five dollar signs. Nope, four is the max, I think. Okay. I think you're right. No, I guess I, I kind of knew when you look at like different places or whatever. I guess I just I don't know. I just don't trust anything. All right. So two dollar sign is is it PF Chang's? Is it Applebee's? What is it? Yeah, I think Applebee's is probably the low end of two dollar sign, and I think there's probably a higher end of two dollar signs. All right. Okay. All right. So Texas Roadhouse, maybe. Texas Roadhouse. I had I had a great meal at a Texas Roadhouse. Well, I love Texas. Texas. Roadhouse. Yeah. Then the one in West Hartford or East Hartford, I don't think was as good. The Texas, it lost some Texas along the way. <laughs> uh, I get paid well and have no issue with splitting, paying for a meal or drink. And I understand that not everyone has the means or desire to go out all the time and pay for two. But I do think that if that is the case, you should be honest about it rather than constantly making comments about spending and costs that make me uncomfortable. How can I bring it up uh, that makes, uh, how can I bring up that it makes me uncomfortable without coming off as rude or pretentious or I just move on because I'm pretty sure he isn't going to grow out of this phase. Uh, yeah, I think the number two one is so much worse than the other ones. Like you want to make it to happy hour. Cool. No problem. You know, guys that are really frugal and kind of map it out. Part of me envies them a little bit, you know, that you know that they're not going to put themselves in a situation financially because they're kind of wired the right way where other people can take some more financial risks. And, you know, I look at stuff over the years and go, you know, maybe you could have tightened the screws up a little bit there. So there's, there's part of me that admires, admires, uh, somebody that is kind of mapping this out and it feels a little Ben Stiller ish along came poly risk management thing where because he works in lending that maybe, there's some part of him that's like wired to do the job better because he's always thinking about things in, you know, this isn't risk in loans. This is, do, do you want to pay fucking two extra dollars for a beer? Uh, the, the chances are, is this is kind of how he is and he's always going to be this. And I think the number two option that you shared with us where he asked you to cover his essential budget overflow the night before by getting him whole again Will he be up in the game the next day because his budget wouldn't be used on any breakfast stuff like coffee or juice, <laughs> so he'd be back to even. That's not somebody you want to marry unless you love that, right? If every other part of it's great. Does he have the shark gills for shark gill season? Maybe, you know, but that number two example is fucking lame. And if, if the other ones bother you, that's the stuff that I think is really going to bother you. Yeah, I mean, if it... If he, what he meant was just like, yo, do you, I got dinner. Do you want to get breakfast? Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think the over explanation is weird, but you know, early on when you're dating someone and it's not like it's past the point of like, oh, this is our second date or whatever. Like you guys are staying at each other's houses and you're doing stuff together. Like it can feel like, damn it. I just, I paid for the last three dinners and then we went, got coffee in between. And then I paid for lunch and then she wants to go out to breakfast. Like it can feel like, God, I'm just getting hammered here. And if I don't say anything, this is just going to be the the nature of things. And it, I, I don't know if that's what he was going for. He might have said it the wrong way, but just like, you know, 
I, like sometimes there's a it's a it, there's a your turn sort of thing that could happen here and um you know sometimes it happens with me with grocery trips and stuff and it's like all right you know we went out to lunch yesterday went to get some coffee we just you know went to the grocery store and then it's like oh we got to run to the pharmacy and i'm like standing at the counter and i'm like is she gonna pull this out it looks like she's not pulling out that purse so it's like she's she hasn't gotten a hint and maybe it's be like you want to get this one and I think that would have been a better way to say it if he was just like, you know, the way my budget's set up. <laughs> you know what I mean, it, it, that could that could be weird, but um, I, it, if you would know whether he was like just bad at explaining that or not, and then I know some couples that like who's pretty close to me uh, and the the folks that I'm marrying into who just they have like an app and it's like they're talking cents, you know, they're talking they're <laughs> talking you know two seventy five, you know, just splitting the you know the five dollar meal or something, but. It's just so that it's it's like they have an app and they just plug it in. It's like, all right. So, you know, so far, you know, you're into me for eighty seven dollars and twenty five cents for, you know, the last four purchases. And, you know, maybe that's a way that you could see where you're at <laughs> without him having to tell you everything, if that's what bothers you. Or or maybe when you're out in a group, you know, and you're done, you're like, you got to stop doing this like in the group. It's just it's throwing the but the throwing the vibes off and maybe he'll he'll understand it from that thing where you're like other people are like I get you, but other people can't see it, you know, the way I see it. So, you know, maybe just cool off this. So those are, those are a couple options, but um, I don't know. I think what Ryan said, like it's, it, it's not going to change. It's, it's who this guy is. Right. So like, how much do you like this guy? <laughs> like, is, is this the only red flag is, is he, is he funny? Like, is he good? Is he super good looking? Obviously, he's not he, funny. He's got some. He, there's a good <laughs> chance he's not funny. Good. All right. Well said. Yeah. Good point. Uh, there's a good chance he, you know, he's got he's got some money. Um, so, like, do the other things sort of outweigh this one sort of if it's this one annoying thing to you? Uh, I totally understand why it wouldn't. It would probably piss me off. I mean, listen, there's some stuff like I'm married. Kyle's about to be married. Like, there's there's stuff that your partner can not like about you and you guys are still going to be fine. But at the right. end like of the day, what, what would you say? Like the six things about your wife that you don't like? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm just I, kidding. No, I'm, I'm trying to think of stuff that she, I'm trying to think of stuff she wouldn't like about me. Like I can be cold. Um, I am very, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very, I'm a realist. Like I'm very just like, no, like this isn't going to happen. Uh, I probably play too many video games from time to time. So like there's there's plenty of things that are knocks on me, but they weren't ultimately deal breakers for her. So that's great. Uh, but if this is a deal breaker for you, that's totally fine. <laughs> what, um, what? No, I'm just I, it's just funny li having you list the things that you think are like flaws about yeah, yourself. Like, where you're like, hey. No, because I mean, there's also kind of listening to you say this. It's another reason why Saruti and I get along so well. Because uh, it'd be like, what would you say about yourself? Like, there's going to be days where I'm just going to be very I'm moody. detached. I'm yeah. a moody guy. It is what it is. She's, a, she's okay some with days it. Where you're like, what's this guy's deal today? Does he hate me? No, no. Just, you know, <laughs> got other things I'm thinking about for the next it's just few Tuesday. days. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We're good. We're good. I'm so in love. Really? Yeah, yeah. No, you're the best. The only but thing I would say, me, though, leave is, me alone. This guy, like if you bring this guy around your friends, your friends are going to like this guy. That's a, that's like like a classic red flag where people are like, what the hell is this guy doing? He's like splitting the bill this way. And he's like worried about, as Kyle said, like 50 cents I, on I, the bill. I think the overage one is such a red flag. It just is of like, hey, do you mind? Because last night I paid for stuff that you that he would bring it up. I, I don't think the guy should have to pay for every single thing. I'm a little old fashioned. I think it's okay that you're you're supposed to pay for most, but it's just it's just great. It's a great feeling when she goes to the car just like once mm -hmm. every, you know, if you're dating somebody seriously and once every few weeks she she pulls out the card. Like that's all I ever needed. Just knowing that it existed, that it was a slight possibility every now and then. Um and look, depending on your financial situation, that plays into it as well, too. You know, if you're more broke than she is, then yeah, you got to figure out some adjustments here on the fly. Um, but based on everything you've both said, or at least the way you've explained your financial situation and explained his financial situation. And I can also understand like the frugal person because like, what's the idea of like, why is everybody supposed to just go out and one guy whacks the tab with high end margaritas and <laughs> orders two extra fucking apps and an entree. And then everybody's going, oh, all right, 16 bucks for everybody here. <laughs> yeah. Like, I kind of get it, you know, especially like when I was broke and I'd go, oh, this fucking guy's going to order like a ribeye sidecar 
on top of everything else. But Although that's not what, what would happen, is. right? What would happen in our friend group is the broke guys would go the other way. They'd hammer the tab, knowing that hey, you're going to get everything on a discount. We'll subsidize you're just going to whack this up <laughs> yeah. twenty. But, but you know, when you've known each other for ten or fifteen years and you hope it could balance out, it actually never balances out. The same guys that win by taking advantage of it were the ones that won every time. And it would just get to the point where guys would be like, hey, you're going to be excited tonight later in an hour, knowing that you like ripped off the rest of us by ordering. Like one guy was like, guys were like, hey, let's just do beers and burgers. Everybody's good. Right. And then the guy turns. He's like two Jack and Cokes. <laughs> we were like, what? What are you doing? And he's like, I'm getting Jack and Cokes. Like, but you already ordered yourself a second one. Who's the second one for? He's like me, you know? <laughs> and so I'm like, that guy didn't give a shit. We'd all known each other long enough. So he figured like, all right, if these guys are going to get rid of me as a friend, it would have already happened. But yeah, it can get annoying. But, you know, the number the number two one, can you help my overage so I can get back on track budget wise? That's 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 a I think I'd hide that or lie about it if I just started dating somebody. Tough to come back. That he, that. Right. That he, no, I just think the fact that he couldn't hide that one the next day and you've been hanging out, what, a month? Just even if he felt that way and that's what he wanted to ask you, shut the fuck up. Yeah, Don't I ask agree. a girl that. I think you got to either ask, is this a quirk? That's Is this a guy with a quirk that's going to be able to retire at the age of 55 because he's got a budget? Or is this just a guy that's insane? I think that's what yeah, you got to ask. Is he going to retire at 55 because you're now subsidizing his budget? <laughs> Yeah, like you are, you're going to be on a on a budget your entire life. Then, like you're going to have like, yeah. Even if you're retired, it's going to be like, ah, oh, we can't go on this vacation, we can't do that, and like that sucks. Coming home, can you sit down? I need to talk to you. <laughs> oh my god, what is it? So I've been noticing these magazine subscriptions. I don't think you're reading all of them. <laughs> what percentage would you say you read of this? Yeah, is this twelve bucks a month going to really the best max? Like we maximize that twelve dollars. 